Chapter Six of the Story of Mankind. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Michelle Crandall. The Story of Mankind by Hendrik von Loon. Chapter Six: The Story of Egypt. The Rise and Fall of Egypt. The river Nile was a kind friend, but occasionally it was a hard taskmaster. It taught the people who lived along its banks the noble art of teamwork. They depended upon each other to build their irrigation trenches and keep their dikes in repair. In this way, they learned how to get along with their neighbors, and their mutual benefit association quite easily developed into an organized state. Then, one man grew more powerful than most of his neighbors, and he became the leader of the community and their commander-in-chief when the envious neighbors of Western Asia invaded the prosperous valley. In due course of time, he became their king, and ruled all the land from the Mediterranean to the mountains of the West. But these political adventures of the old pharaohs, the word meant the man who lived in the big house, rarely interested the patient and toiling peasant of the grain fields. Provided he was not obliged to pay more taxes to his king than he thought just, he accepted the rule of Pharaoh as he accepted the rule of mighty Osiris. It was different, however, when a foreign invader came and robbed him of his possessions. After twenty centuries of independent life, a savage Arab tribe of shepherds, called the Hyksos, attacked Egypt and for five hundred years they were the masters of the valley of the Nile. They were highly unpopular, and great hate was also felt for the Hebrews, who came to the land of Goshen to find a shelter after their long wandering through the desert, and who helped the foreign usurper by acting as his tax-gatherers and his civil servants. But shortly after the year 1700 B.C., the people of Thebes began a revolution, and after a long struggle, the Hyksos were driven out of the country, and Egypt was free once more. A thousand years later, when Assyria conquered all of Western Asia, Egypt became a part of the empire of the Sardanapalus. In the 7th century BC, it became once more an independent state, which obeyed the rule of a king who lived in the city of Sais, in the delta of the Nile. But in the year 525 B.C., Cambyses, the king of the Persians, took possession of Egypt, and in the 4th century B.C., when Persia was conquered by Alexander the Great, Egypt too became a Macedonian province. It regained a semblance of independence when one of Alexander's generals set himself up as king of a new Egyptian state and founded the dynasty of the Ptolemies, who resided in the newly built city of Alexandria. Finally, in the year 39 BC, the Romans came. The last Egyptian queen, Cleopatra, tried her best to save the country. Her beauty and charm were more dangerous to the Roman generals than half a dozen Egyptian army corps. Twice she was successful in her attacks upon the hearts of her Roman conquerors. But in the year 30 BC, Augustus, the nephew and heir of Caesar, landed in Alexandria. He did not share his late uncle's admiration for the lovely princess. He destroyed her armies, but spared her life, that he might make her march in his triumph as part of the spoils of war. When Cleopatra heard of this plan, she killed herself by taking poison, and Egypt became a Roman province. End of chapter 6 Recording by Michelle Crandall, Fremont, California, August 2008.